Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to another Mortgage Coach Coaching Call. Every Tuesday morning, 9 o'clock Pacific, we're here to deliver leadership and value to mortgage professionals, and today we invited realtors. So, Jim, my intention every week on Tuesday is to deliver, to deliver the mortgage industry's absolutely best weekly sales meeting. My name is Dave Savage. I'm the CEO of Mortgage Coach. For anybody that's new to this weekly coaching call, I urge you to connect with me on LinkedIn at DT Savage. And for all of you, connect with us on Facebook. You know, we're constantly updating what's going on in the Mortgage Coach community. Join our conversation. And there will be some deliverables from today. So just go to our, our uh, Facebook page, like us. I do want to call some attention around our most successful blog post possibly ever. We, we put a, an infographic out there about what if you just took $5 a month, or excuse me, $5 a day and applied it to your principal. And, and when you think about it, for the average American home that's a $214,000 home, that would be about $150 a month. So for just an extra $150 a month to accelerate your debt reduction, you pay off your home 7.7 .7 years faster. And you'd save a lot of money. So I, I bring this learning and this concept to you in today's call because this is just one of many ways that mortgage professionals can deliver advice above and beyond just quoting rates and fees, showing your customer, teaching your customer how a little bit of an extra monthly payment, prepaying their mortgage, can save them a lot of money. So I, I recommend uh, check out that post. We actually put a link if you want to take this infographic and you want to share it in your blog. I also made an Edge video, so you could click on it from our Facebook page. And if you just put Savage, my name, into your app, again, if you're new to our calls and you haven't downloaded the Mortgage Coach app, it's free. Just download the Mortgage Coach app in Android, iPhone app, put in Savage, and I created a little two-minute video around the concept of prepaying your mortgage faster. So just a great strategy and a great reminder for all you Mortgage Coach members on today's call. Before I bring in Ken and the star of the show, I do want to frame it a bit around a conversation I had with Todd Duncan. Uh, Todd Duncan was my co-host last time I interviewed Ken, and we are currently preparing for the big sales mastery event in a few weeks. There's going to be about 1,500 mortgage professionals in Palm Springs on the 23rd through the 26th, and Todd and I were preparing for a particular panel that we're doing around how can mortgage professionals improve their conversion rates. And I had, uh, we had three just superstar mortgage producers. Mortgage producers that are doing over $100 million a year in business, they're incredibly successful. When they talk to a home buyer, that home buyer does business with them. And we were talking about what are, what are the keys to that, and I just couldn't help but think of it as we go into this conversation with Ken, you know, the nation's number one realtor. And, 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 and again, Ken, I'm going to bring you into the conversation in just a minute, but I want everybody to be thinking how you work with your realtor, and I know there are hundreds of realtors on today's call watching this with their loan officers, but how you work together as a team, how you as a realtor refer that mortgage professional, how you position it really makes a difference. And all you mortgage professionals, how you deliver an amazing sales experience, not just quoting rates, taking an app and closing a loan, but you really deliver obvious value and insight, it really makes a difference. So realtors, and we'll talk about it, how can you better refer in a way that's more valuable to the customer and to the mortgage professional? And mortgage professionals, how do you take that handoff and do more than just close a loan on time, which is obviously critical to being in the game, but how do you do that in a really masterful way? We're going to cover that today. So, so we're going to kick this call off. Uh, Kid and I have had a few conversations prior to the call, but it's really all about, today's all about the psychology of success. I mean, Ken has an amazing story, an amazing backstory. story. He is the nation's number one realtor, according to Real Wall Street Journal. Back when he was with Keller Williams, he was number one agent in America. He's just a tremendous professional. And Ken DeLeon, it's what, great to have you. And thanks for taking time to prepare, and welcome to the Mortgage Coach community. Thank you, Dave. It's a true honor to be here, and I'm really looking forward to the conversation about psychology and how to be a winner. Yeah, no, it's, it's going to be great. Uh, for those of you that are on this call, if you have not been to Ken's website, 
I really urge you, uh, if you haven't already seen this video, we, we pushed it out on Facebook. We put it in the email that invited you to these. But he's got an amazing personal story of how he's overcome adversity uh, to really be where he's at today. So when you think of Ken, it's not like he was just born the nation's top realtor. I mean, he's had some real struggles, struggles that I, I hope I never have in my life. Uh, and it's really defined who he is. So if you haven't watched the video that talks about Ken's personal backstory, you could go to his website, kendeleon.com, and there's a link to that. I urge everybody, as you get a takeaway from this call, as you think about what you're doing, make sure you've watched that video. So, so Ken, let's kick off the Q&A. Let's keep this a very organic conversation. But some of the folks who are on this call have heard you talk before. They were in our last call. Some of them weren't. Let's keep in mind that some of the folks on this call are realtors. While you know, we invited mortgage professionals, literally hundreds of loan officers have invited realtors. So you're talking to both people that do what you do and loan officers. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your mortgage practice and how you're unique. What's your unique value proposition? I think one of the keys, Dave, in life, both, in real, both personally and professionally, is to truly distinguish yourself, to be unique. We're one, you know, there's 7 billion people out there. There's over 1.2 million agents. There's at least that many loan officers. The key is how do you distinguish yourself? How is your value proposition, what you're offering your clients, higher than anyone else? And I think one of the things that I found is distinguish yourself, be truly yourself, be distinct, and then have the right mindset, and then success will come. But I think the key is if you can envision yourself as the customer or the client, what would you want to see? What's missing in the marketplace? And how can you fill that void? And that was my mindset when I entered real estate. Um, I really wanted to be different than others. And I looked at the city I want to sell in, Palo Alto, kind of the heart of Silicon Valley. Median price is over $2 million. Everybody wanted to be an agent. You know, there's 700 agents selling 500 homes. So I said, if I want to succeed, I better be different than everyone else. And I took that mindset of differentiating myself and have done really well. And I actually apply it not only to succeeding in business, but I think my life is more enjoyable too. I don't fear death. I fear living a mediocre life. I'm living the business I want and the life I want. I think it's just having a clear vision of what you provide to clients, what you provide to yourself. Well, I love, I love that comment you just made. I fear a mediocre life. I mean, that, <laughs> is, that is really powerful. And one of the things as I've interviewed, uh, top performers is they're not playing the game of I want to win the business. They're playing the game is I want to wow people. I want to surpass expectations. And you know I've seen you speak on stage. I've interviewed that now for the second time. And you're not just playing for wow. You're playing for remarkable. I mean amazing, memorable, uh, in a very unique way. So that's awesome. So you're in you're in Silicon Valley. Yes. Your average uh, purchase price is two million. A lot of people are pretty jealous around that. Uh, you know, what is your overall volume and, and also both volume and transactions, if you could just give us an idea of your practice. Excellent. And first, Dave, I like what you said about really trying to be different. I like the philosopher Schopenhauer, the German philosopher, he had a good quote. He said the marksman, now archery quote, the marksman hits the bullseye, the genius shoots beyond. For those on the call who are really seeking to make a change, you kind of have to envision things farther ahead. The vision things were, where, where's the industry heading in five years and ten years? How can you provide that now? And I think that's the key. I want to, when you die, I want to say I lived a full life. I don't have any, you know, regrets whatsoever. You just want to live fully to the, to the point where you have no regrets and you're learning. So volume-wise, um, when I ended up being number one, I made $275 million in sales. Um, this year is going to be probably even more. Year to date, I'm at $265 million, um, counting pending. Um, wow. And then next year, we're going to hit 400. And I kind of say not like I'm hoping to, but we're going to. It's just a matter of marketing that. and executing the model. But like I guarantee you, we're going to hit over 400. Wow. Yeah. So, so, I mean, mega producer, I mean, number one, uh, not number two, uh, number, number one in, in the country. So let's talk about psychology of success. I mean, that's a term that I think you ask that question to different people and everybody's going to give a different answer. But what does that mean to you? What is that? Describe it. Perfect. I think psychology of success is that I, I just want to say this one life I'm living, if I die tomorrow, I was ecstatic with the life I lived. I left a huge positive legacy, both personally and professionally. And what that really means is that 
you as a, as a lender, as an agent, should constantly be growing to actualize your potential. You should know that you've achieved most, the greatness you can. And a lot of that is just by taking those chances, taking those calculated risks, not caring what people think about you, being free. Actually, ironically, I found that if you're really bold and just truly who you are, actually the market rewards that. It's not just it feels good to be yourself and free. It's actually economically efficient. Where I think a lot of the success I've had within business is just clients can tell I'm genuinely who I am. I truly care about them. Um, I care about my business practice. But kind of uh, to get away from general broad statements, I wanted to share a few concepts with the audience that's really helped me succeed, both personally and then most importantly professionally. And I would say probably one of the most important ones is just to actually know yourself. Know who you are. And then you want to put your luck, you have this one life to live, you want to put yourself in the best environment possible. And I found that, so one of the keys, I'd say one of my principles would just be know yourself and actually don't focus so much on changing who you are, actually because you are who you are to a degree. Change your market or change your target audience. Just to give some background myself, I actually, I entered law school, I went to Berkeley, um, Berkeley, if you will, it's a lot of, a very inter intellectually interesting place. But I knew that law was not for me. And I was very good at law, but I love people. I love being around people. I get, people will stimulate me. And I just have always done well with people. I do great on improv. People ask me a question, but there's really not, not none of those qualities within law. There's not much improv, and it's all clients, you know. But I kind of knew that real estate was the best industry for my skill set. So rather than kind of trying to change myself to fit a mold, I think one of the keys is just find the right environment that maximizes your talent for the right fit. And it's not a coincidence that I'm doing so well within real estate because I've directed my life lead to this goal. And I'll share uh, what I think is the secret of life um, to, to everybody here. For me, one of the secrets to life is doing what you're best at. If you can combine three things. Number one, what you're best at. Number two, what you most enjoy. And number three, what society most values. So what you're best at most enjoy and society most values. And if you can do combine all three of those, that's amazing. I'm going to try and share some of those ways that I've combined those three via real estate, but let me give you a quick funny analogy. I am actually, um, wait, you think I'm great in real estate. I'm even better on the dance floor. And uh, the things I found is actually, it's actually at the start of the night when I can combine that. Because the music's starting, everyone's just at the bar, you know, warming up. They don't want to be embarrassed and dance too early. I'm out there, I'm like, whoa, I got, I got, I got room to move, I'm cruising, and I'm going. And I kind of, I set the whole place free, because everyone's like, look at that freak over there. I guess I can dance, and then I get the whole dance floor started, and nobody knows, and I just kind of lead that charge. And after about 10 minutes of people saying, look at that freak, by that time all the ladies come, and then all the guys are like, shoot, I better join, and then the whole place is going off. And then uh, I just kind of pass the spotlight to the crowd, and then kind of the night goes on, and it starts cooling off. But then the DJ picks up the music again, and I'm like, whoa, the night is young. Let's take this to the next level. And then I kind of recharge the crowd. But those are two instances. I, I love kind of setting the spotlight on the dance floor. It sets the pace. sets the pace of life in that night. And also it's what I most enjoy, and it's what the crowd most values. And, of course, I'm having fun talking about a dance analogy. But if you can just combine that, I love my life, and I think my clients can sense that, and they want to be around me. So give yourself that freedom. I know it sounds odd that I'm saying be more true to yourself and you'll succeed in business, but it's worked for me and it'll work for you, and you're going to find those right clients. Um, and I would say that would take me to the number two principle, which is know your model. I think a lot of people, whether in real estate or mortgage, they kind of like just like stumble into it a little bit. I want to succeed, I want to do this, but maybe they might do what others do. And I think one of the reasons for my success is before I really entered real estate, I gave a lot of thought to how can I differentiate myself? How is my unique value system and what I offer going to be a good fit for my clients? And I would say that one of the best ways to create a great market niche, think about, take a step back, forget you're in the industry, take a step back, if you're a buyer who's buying a home, if you're a buyer who's applying for a loan, what would you enjoy most about the process? What would frustrate you the most? And what would frustrate you the most, you should try and fill that void. And the, what I found is, your best customers are people who are like you. You're going to relate well. They're in the same life cycle, maybe the same profe you know, same kind of professional sphere. But if you can fill a void for someone like yourself, you're going to do amazingly well. 
And for myself, when I entered, I was math econ before law school at Berkeley. I'm very analytical. So what I was missing, I was buying investment properties. I was still an attorney at the time. Buying investment properties, I want to see more analysis rigor. I want thoughts on when's the best time of year to buy. Which neighborhoods have the most appreciation potential? What are the trends driving the market? Is this home a good value? How do I get a home below market value? If I'm a, if I'm a buyer getting a loan, how do I compete against the buyers coming from China who are all cash? What's my realtor strategy for that? And all these questions where I wasn't getting the answers to from my agent. And I just thought others probably feel the sense of frustration. So let me cure those problems and enter real estate. And as a result of that, what I really love most is having knowledge. I want to give me all the knowledge and let me make an informed decision. And I thought that my clients would want that as well. So I took the time to write about 200 plus pages worth of articles. So it's a large home buyer booklet I give my clients. And it's pretty great because I think when people interview, when sellers interview, they interview you know three people, all the agents come prepared. But I think when we meet buyers, most agents certainly, and probably most lenders, I don't think they're as prepared as we should be. Buyers are just as valuable as sellers, and actually they, you make more money because you want to advertise. So take the time to prepare for the buyers. And when I have this 200 pages of articles I've written them, for one, the clients are impressed. You know, I introduce it very professionally in the same way. I take it and I throw it down and I go, who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? Um, but by having all that knowledge that it gives to my clients, you know, very analytical, a lot of statistics, um, analysis, trends, graphs, they're very impressed with it. And then they go, I don't need to talk to anyone else. And then the buyers who have talked to others, I've taken statistics. I'm 32 of 32. An amazing 100%. Listing is I only win 50 plus percent of the time. But buyers, when I have all that preparation, they're impressed with it. And then also what I say is this year I'm probably going to do, say I go 300 million or just shy of it, I'll probably do about 140 million with that of buyers. So a lot of buyer volume. But the key is I've prepared them well. They have all my knowledge there. They look at all the articles I've written, all the videos I've shot of the neighborhoods, and they already feel they have the knowledge. I just need to find them the right home. So it really expedites the process. So, so Ken, I want to uh, call a few things out. I hope everybody has connected a few things. So, I mean, first of all, Ken, I have a feeling that you made a decision that real estate was going to be your career. Yeah. And then you've made it right. I, I'll bet you that whatever you'd be doing, it would be your life. You would love it. You would think, you know, you wouldn't, you could be loving something else and be just successful, but you have a way about you that I make a decision and then I make it right. So I don't want to, I don't want to drill down on that, but I do want to make sure before this conversation is over that we talk about that because everybody on this call, right now you've made a decision. I mean, you're either a loan officer or you're a realtor. That's, you're, you wouldn't be on this call if you hadn't made that decision. Now the question is, are you going to make it right? Are you mm -hmm. going to love what you do? And I do believe that that's an intentional process. I mean, I think some people, I have a feeling, can we share the fact that we're probably both pretty optimistic people? Yeah. And, and so maybe it's easy for us to love what we do because of how we're wired. But I don't care whether it's easy for you or not. Let's do it. Let's get there um, at, a, at a really, really high level. The other thing I want to, I just took a note on, I hope everybody else took that note. Guys, your mortgage coach members, uh, what did you hear Ken talk about? He, he's gone into his local market. He's done unique research. So we're not just talking. He's showing them Zillow reports, things that his buyers can get from somewhere else. He's created unique insight and knowledge that's got charts, graphs. When a home buyer in his market looks at it, they're like, wow, this guy is sharp. Wow, I can trust this guy. And wow, he's got something unique that I can't get from someone else. So if you're a realtor, again, I hope that's a takeaway for you that you need to up the game. If you want to get, well, obviously, to Ken's level, but even be the best in your market, what can you do to have more unique insight? And for all you mortgage professionals, that's what Mortgage Coach does. We make that easy for you to deliver custom insight that's tailored to a borrower's needs. So, so again, we'll come back to that. I want to hope, I just hope everybody got that. I mean, that's, that's a big... You know, I don't want to say what you do is simple, Ken. I mean, it's definitely not easy, but when you really look at your formula of success, I mean, it's, it's a few things. It's uh, not rocket science. It's not rocket science, and it's not a long equation that's 20 formulas deep. It's three or four things that you're executing at a really high level day after day after day, getting better and better and better. And one of those is unique insight 
uh, that's very valuable in your custom market. I hope everybody got that. So Kim, you had a third, and then let's circle back with how do you how do you just get yourself so excited, and what do you what I mean, I know you have other realtors in your office, and how do you help people um, have the kind of passion for what they do? You know, any advice you have on that? So let's, let's roll. Perfect. Sounds good. And that's actually a good segue. Where I would say the third um, core principle that's really helped me out actually is a good segue into why am I so motiva motivated and excited about life. And I would say that the third core principle that's really helped me out is actually to just not care what other people think, of, think about you. And I know that sounds odd. We're, theoretically, we're salespeople. I don't view myself as a salesperson because I kind of try to provide a lot of insight and consulting. But we are in sales, so it sounds odd, I know, to say you shouldn't care what people think about you. But the great, I've discovered the great irony in life, and this holds personally and also professionally. And that is, once you stop caring what people think about you, ironically, the more people care to be around you. And again, once you stop caring and you set yourself free, then people can feel you have that spark of energy, that, that life that is so lacking, and people are drawn to you. And sadly, I've learned that the hard way. Um, I've written, uh, as Dave mentioned, I've been through three tragedies. I won't touch upon those too much now, but you will like the title of my memoirs. The title is, Why Do Bad Things Happen to Sexy People? It's a very sexy audience. I can even feel you through the video monitor. Sexy audience, but we've all had hard things happen to us. But the key is, what does not kill you makes you sexier. Um, but kidding aside, when I was younger, someone who I loved ended up caring too much about um, society, and it really impacted her life. And I just said, I'm going to proclaim my own greatness. I'm great because I think I'm great. And my friend, her fatal flaw was letting other people determine her life. And for me, it's just that if you envision what you're going to provide, the value add the client, then it becomes true. And I believe, I think Dave, you and I both believe in the self-fulfilling prophecy. Self-fulfilling in that whether you envision success or failure, you're pretty much always right. Because whatever you envision, there's a higher probability, it's been empirically proven, that what you envision has a higher probability of becoming true. And then for me, I've just set myself free. And I think that's given me the freedom to just laugh more, to actually think more, too, and to kind of get out of the box. Where a flaw is thought, both in real estate and in most professions, people look backwards. Oh, another top agent, they, they, 20 years ago, they had this idea, and it propelled them to the top. Let me do that same idea. That might have worked 20 years ago, but I think why I'm doing well and continuing to hit new highs in profession as well as happiness is that keep on innovating. Being number one in the nation, most people view that as a plateau in your career. I view that as a hilltop to build my rocket ship. I just want to go even higher, take more chances, push myself even more. And that's what keeps us exciting. And why am I so motivated in life? And I, what I realize is how short life can be. I've been through three tragedies. I've come close to the loss of someone I love and then two near-death experiences. And when you get so close to death, you gain a heightened awareness of life. And that just life is so short. And really, all you are is your time. And the idea, what makes me happy is that I could die tomorrow, hit by a bus, and then I'm happy with the life I lived. I left a legacy. I've impacted at this point thousands of great friends of mine. And it's just knowing that I've done something greater than myself. I've left the world a better place. And then uh, maybe I'll just conclude with uh, thinking about, I think one of the keys to success is have a very purpose-driven life. If you can really feel like you have a goal in life that you're helping to achieve or further along, then I think then you're going to really succeed and you'll have that energy to motivate you every morning. And what is the purpose of life? Please, please, I hope no one in here says money. There's so much more to life than money. There's sex, power. You should be focused on other things, not money. Um, but kidding aside, before one of my tragedies, I used to think the goal in life was happiness. I want to be happy and make others around me happy. And I can do that very well, especially on the dance floor. But what I realized with my tragedies, Coming close to death, I was having all these epiphanies, this huge growth. I was still an attorney at the time when one of my tragedies occurred. And I realized life is so short, I want to do something I love. And I realized that real estate would be something I love, so it gave me that power. But it's just by having, and also what I realized, it gave me a new purpose of life. And now my purpose in life is evolution or growth. And the whole compass of emotions, sadness and tragedy, not just happiness, um, are there. And I use any sort of sadness or adversity and setback just propel me higher to the next level. I use that tragedy, adversity as a springboard towards greater evolution and growth. And I'm motivated to keep on growing. And also, because every day is different, I'm excited for my life. I've also chosen to live a life of improv. 
where it's not going to be the same every day, and I'm still growing and still learning. If you can learn while teaching, teaching your clients all the time, but you're still learning, that's one of the secrets too because you're still staying, your mind is still young and fluid as long as you keep learning and, you know, turning in on things like what you have, Dave, just like seeking knowledge, seeking greatness. That's one of the keys to life and one of the keys to my happiness and motivation. Beautiful. So I, I really, I remember when I, I heard you say that a while ago, stop caring what other people think of you. And the note I put is Ken defines himself. You know, you, you are, the, you, you define your happiness, you define who you are, and, and so many people don't. I mean, even if you think you do, when you really think about how you're executing your day emotionally, someone says something to you and, you know, it, you own it. It becomes overwhelming. Uh, purpose driven. Now you, a couple things I want to make sure I clarify. So happiness is not the goal. Now I know with you, you're, you really want to get in the game. It's all about social impact. It's about how many people through your story, through your success, through your vision, can you impact? So, so growth and social impact, that's what drives you? Is that right? The idea that my life, that when I die, then I'm not just one of seven plus billion, that I made a difference. And I don't mind when I physically die, but what would really scare me is that mediocre life where you're just forgotten. Because when I die, I'm hoping that what I'm creating here is going to fundamentally change um, the real estate market for the better for everybody, for better for realtors, better for home buyers, hopefully for lenders as well. But I mean, I'm really trying to, both on a professional level, it's definitely and personally, really make a change in this world. And that's what keeps me excited that, you know, I think it's, if you look at evolution, it's the mutations that cause the growth. I'm kind of mutating myself in a good way, becoming different, thinking uniquely, having different experiences, different thoughts. And then through that, I can see things from a different perspective. And that's probably one of the reasons I've done well. I don't just see like, oh, it's always been like this. I actually, when I approach a business model or a life situation, my first thought is how should this be? Not how is it currently or what are the, you know, what are the, what is the model? It's just what's the most optimal thing to do here? So, so this I think is a great segue to getting very tactical, very specific around some strategies um, that realtors and mortgage professionals can implement. But you, you're playing the game of being unforgettable. And, 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 and obviously, we've all heard this in business, be memorable, deliver wow. But, but are you really doing it? You know, when you, loan officers, when you meet with a home buyer, are you really delivering amazing value in that conversation when you meet with a realtor? Or are you forgettable? Do they forget about you a couple days later? And, and obviously, to you know, have so much ambition and commitment to be the number one realtor in America, I mean, you're playing at an entirely different level that you're playing to be unforgettable in the afterlife. Um, so again, you know, I'm not here. That's not right for everybody. You know, that's Ken's vision, his ambition. Uh, let's talk about how we can be, whether we're, again, I want every mortgage professional to close over five loans a month. And let's face it. Every mortgage professional does it. 70% don't. Some of the loan officers on this call right now, you're closing over 20 loans a month. Some of you are closing over five loans a month. Many of you are closing less than five loans a month. We want to get you to another level. And for you realtors, uh, we want to get you to another level. So, so Ken, let's talk about some specific uh, client experiences that you created because I know for you, it's not about just services and solutions. You're in the experience business. Let's talk about some experiences that you create for your customers that are amazing, remarkable, and memorable. You know, if you could just share some of the things that you're doing. Perfect. Um, so I think on the buy side, with my volume, I can now do things, I can have almost a lost leader that would benefit my clients a lot. And I think that's the key. You have to always think of what are your clients' problems and how can you help solve them? And I think a lot of our clients are very busy. Usually both of the spouses are working or the moms or one of the spouses is taking care of children. But if we can make it as turnkey as possible, then it's advantageous. The client's going to love you. So I thought about what kind of issues would they have and how can I solve them. On the buy side, I looked at my clients and what issues are going to pop up and how can I address those. So uh, things I have, a, I have a full-time real estate attorney on staff. Any sort of legal issues come up um, that can be solved pretty quickly, he can take care of, he can address it. I have a full-time interior designer on staff. My clients buy a home, they need some remodeling help. She's there, she can help them. She can help them pick the contractor, pick the right places. Um, I have a full-time contractor on staff. He can help my clients evaluate the home. 
he can look at things for listings. He can do minor repairs. Um, I also um, I have a concierge on staff, and I spoke of this a little bit before, but a huge benefit where if my clients, they're looking to remodel or they're looking to do anything, we've already researched who the best service providers are within all of Silicon Valley, best roofers, movers, contractors. And we've also tried to pre-negotiate some savings. My concierge, we've already found you know, the greatest people so that save their time, probably what my clients fight the most. But we also save them money just to saying Ken's the number one guy within Silicon Valley doing all, all this business, doing 150 deals a year. Would you want to work with his clients? And of course. And then to the contractor, would you give 10, 20% off? Some say yes, some say no. But the people that say yes, my clients get, here's the best contractors in Silicon Valley. And because of my volume, I pre-negotiate some savings. And then our concierge is going to look over things, just make sure it's a smooth process. And, you know, I pay my concierge, I pay her well, but the amount of referrals I've gotten back in return, probably 50 plus million, just because that white club service clients love. So think about what are your clients' problems and how do you solve them? And then also try to, as Dave mentioned earlier, customize your business model to your region. And on the sales side, one of the things that I do is simply provide the best marketing within Northern California. And I might spend up to 15, 20 million in the first 10 days. It sounds like a lot of money, I know, but I only take listings that I know are going to sell in 10 days. And I have, you know, in our marketplace, even five or six million dollar listings can sometimes sell. I just had one last week, listed it for four million, got multiple offers, sold for 4.3 million. I made 3%, so I made 129,000 in one week. And it's okay that I spent 20,000 marketing the home, because I made 110K in one week. So trying to have that mindset of a dollar per hour if you can provide the best client experience possible, the best results for the client, but also you're in and out, sometimes I think agents particularly, loan officers to a lesser degree, we think we need to spend a lot of time with our clients to really give them, you know, they need to know that we're there holding their hand. I don't want to hold my client's hands while I give her the handkerchief because we got the bad price. I want to pop in, blow it up, give her a glass of champagne, we got this amazing price, and then we both live great lives. But <laughs> my model and for listing six words, blow in, blow up, and then blow out. And then so, I think my clients, they love it, and I'm a happy man too. Well, I, I mean, I, I think that's amazing. I mean, so far, you know, there, I've got three equations to your formula. I mean, first of all, your overall attitude on life and the energy that you bring to a room, it's, it's wow. Uh, yeah, you know, how you define yourself and your, your belief systems there, uh, you know, you're playing that game to be remarkable. The fact that you're creating, and so by the way, that's one. The other one is you're creating this unique insight so that anybody who does business with you is getting something that's unique and valuable in their market. And now this one, here's the third piece of Ken's equation. Again, my opinion, you take your own notes, but these are my notes, is the, you're investing a lot more in your customers than everybody else is. You know, I don't know what it is in the mortgage industry, or excuse me, in the real estate industry, but I think you know, a lot of realtors invest 10% of their commission in advertising and marketing. And I know you're investing a lot more than that. So, so you're coming, you know, you, when you say blow it up, let's get specific. I mean, you are investing a lot of money, a lot of time, in shock and awe, I get the listing, boom. And, and you're not, you're not you're, by making that huge investment, you're unique in your marketplace. What is, by the way, what is the average and if anything you're willing to share uh, around how you invest in selling homes. Definitely. I think that 10% metric you mentioned, Dave, is quite common where people do spend, you see a little bit of marketing out there, kind of at 5 to 15%, 10 being the most common. And then it's funny, as I was a new agent, I looked at, wow, I want to get these listings. There's pretty much my, and again, customized to your marketplace, but the key was for real estate, I want it to be in the listing side. This market moves quickly. How can I differentiate myself? And I found that agents were so hungry for leads, at the start, as with Coldwell Banker, some of my colleagues would happily give Coldwell Banker relocation 50% um, for the lead. And I mean, and then to get a referral fee to give someone 25%, people do that all day long. And I thought, wow, what? And then I just as a whole in the industry, I think we spend so much time on lead generation, whether it's knocking on doors, cold calling, or giving out referral fees. What if instead of putting all that time or money into lead generation, why don't we just provide the best client experience possible? In this age of social networking, word is going to spread amazingly quickly, and then the, the best model 
it's going to become well known and then you're just going to feed upon itself. So I said, let me take the normal, let me go low, let me go 5% that people spend on marketing. And I would, people would happily give a 25% referral fee. So go, I'm going to spend 30%. Rather than give it to an agent, let me give it indirectly to the client through great marketing. So I'll spend 30% of my money on the listing, blow it up, get, I feel great, I sleep well at night because the client got the best result possible. We were everywhere they want to be. And now at this point, um, in most marketplaces, commissions are declining. Um, you have upper end homes. I'm the opposite. I'm able to charge a premium for my services instead of a lot of people over two million. It's now five percent in our marketplace. I'm charging six percent oftentimes and getting it happily because I can say with my marketing, you're getting three percent plus more, and I just have the empirical my dollar per square foot, my sales price to list price ratio, uh, my days on market, all these metrics that kind of can show that the marketing is working and they're getting more for it. So it's kind of the key is not just win-win, but win-win-win. I'm creating these positive feedback loops. The clients love me because it's the best marketing. I'm getting a huge amount of calls because everyone's like, wow, I saw how well you marketed that home. I saw it went half a million above list price. Some of my listings, I'll list at 2.5, they'll sell for 3 million. It's that stronger marketplace if you market well. And then it just becomes self-fulfilling. And once you're at the top, it's really easy. The calls just come in. I'm just making sure no one jump starts, you know, leapfrogs past <laughs> me like I leapfrog past others. But the key in life is get there. Once you're the top mortgage person, once you're the top realtor in your area, everything becomes self-fulfilling. It just they see your signs, they call you, you're the go-to person. But get there and get there with the client's best interest at heart. And even have, you know, you can have it when I was brand new, I was putting 40, 50 percent into my listings. I just wanted to get there. You know, wow. people buy the listing with real, you know, 50 percent to call the bank or relocation. Actually, why don't you just give the client, if you really desperately want it, you're brand new. Give the client that 50%. Next time you go down to 40, and then I've kind of leveled out at 30, and my business is still growing. Next year, I'll do 200 plus um, sales, and uh, over 100 of that needs to be listings. So it's well, just so like, but it's going to be easy because I've become that guy. So my advice to you, everyone out there, value your time. I always look at my dollar per hour. If my dollar per hour is over $1,000 an hour, like that one listing, I made a hundred net 110,000 one week. I probably made $3,000 per hour. If you're li your nets, look at your dollar per hour. People say, Ken, you spend too much because I spend that, that little burst of energy and all that marketing. My dollar per hour is amazing. So don't listen to what other people say if you're doing things differently. Have a vision in mind. And if you're succeeding and the client's succeeding, then it's win-win. So, so just bringing this down to the street level for every realtor on this call, the takeaway here is Ken is investing 3x whatever the average is in his market. And, and so, you know, I urge everybody who's a realtor, write down what is the average that you're investing in selling homes for your client, what's that a percentage of revenue, let's benchmark where you're at, and, and what if you took it to 30 or 40%, what could you do in your market to make you unique and valuable? Uh, that would be, you know, running Ken's play. And then taking that to you mortgage professionals, you know, when I interviewed uh, preparing for that conversion conversation, uh, it was a very different conversation. When I was talking to those mortgage professionals that have amazing conversion rates, they were spending 30 minutes to 60 minutes of quality time with home buyers, not quick quotes in 15 minutes, but really, what are your goals? They're delivering this amazing presentation with charts and graphs and unique insight. So, so the concept for you mortgage professionals it's a little different than real estate, you know, but think about it. How much of your commissions are you investing in an amazing experience? And how much of your time are you investing in delivering that amazing customer experience? I have so many loan officers when I tell them, you know, well, this is what Jeremy does. And, you know, by the way, he's a top mortgage professional in our, in our market, in our community. And, and I talk to so many loan officers that are closing three loans a month, less than five, that are like, I don't have time for that. You know, I don't, I don't have time. Well, if you want to run Kin's play, you don't have time not to blow it up with your customers. What is the most amazing experience you can deliver to every home buyer? That's what you need to do. What's the most amazing experience you can deliver when you meet with realtors? That's what you need to do. Uh, you need to be amazing and you need to blow that up. So, so Ken, a um, couple things I want to make sure we get to. Um, by the way, can you still see me? My computer went off. Yeah, no, I can see you. Okay, that was weird. 
I guess that was just something on my side. Uh, so one, is there anything else you want to add? Because it sounds like you, you, you pretty much showcase what you're doing for listings. It's just playing a marketing spend in your market. And then with home buyers, you've got this concierge program. You've got an attorney because in your market it's sophisticated. Um, buyers that are buying multi-million dollar homes, you've got a designer. Again, for a lot of marketplaces, those wouldn't make sense. Um, but the contractor and the concierge, that might make sense in every market. Um, so you've got a buyer strategy to blow it up. You've got a selling strategy to blow it up. Let's, uh, let's kind of segue, unless there's something you want to add to that. We've got loan officers and realtors. How can they work better together? How yeah, can actually, one thing I'd like to mention, Dave, would be along those lines, I just recently had a loan officer who, who made a brilliant decision. He, he approached what I did where I have my clients have problems. How can I solve them? This loan officer came up to me and goes, Ken, there's a problem I bet you're facing. As, you're, as more and more your clients are competing against all cash buyers from overseas, particularly China, you're probably going in there that 30-day close is really disappointing to the client. And he said, we now have a new program. It's a major bank. We now have a new program where we can close in 10 days. I said, 10 days? 20% down? He goes, yeah. If you have you know, more than 50% down, we can close in a week. But 20% down, we can close in 10 days. I'm like, that's amazing. And had it, I've used them a little bit before, but not too much. Just had a recent transaction. We closed in 10 days. We beat the all-cash offers because we had the freer story. And we were only closing a few days later. And I can tell you now, he's my go-to guy. So if you, all the mortgage officers out there, you're very sharp people, but focus on if you can have the realtor be your greatest advocate. I'm just, I'm selling my clients like this guy's amazing. His name's Jerome. Jerome's amazing. He can close in 10 days. You have to understand the competition we're facing and how that solves a huge problem for us. And the clients love him. So if there's any ways that you can, as loan officers, can come up with solutions for your client, or another thing, just say maybe you can't close in 10, but you can close in 20, which is still impressive. But you could say, if you said something like, and every day that you're late, we'll pay the seller's fees. We'll pay their carrying costs up to you know $400 a day, whatever your cap is. But I mean, if you can go in there and tell during your offer presentation, say, we're confident, we know this is a short escrow, we're confident we can close in time, even if not, we're already staying ahead of time. We're going to pay your fees. The lenders, they're so confident we'll close clearly on time. Maybe you're early. We're going to pay your fees if you're late. So if you can just show that confidence. And again, that's a promise that probably you won't have to pay much on because you, if you give a date, you probably will close on time. But if you can do something like that, solve the agent's problems, the agent is going to become your greatest advocate. And everybody, just to have a good rate, you know, as Dave can tell you, that's pretty, you know, you want to separate yourself more than that. And if you can think about what are my top realtors I want to work with, what are the issues they're facing, how can I help solve them, they're going to love you. Yeah, so, so again, everybody, think of your market. I, I know for a fact every realtor loves to be made a hero. Every realtor, you know, when, when they refer you, the more you can make them a hero in the eyes of the client. I think, you know, delivering on the lending promise, that is just table stakes in today's game. If, if it's an all-cash buyer and we need to close it in 10 days, we need to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you can't execute around whatever the lending criteria is, there's a problem. Uh, you know, but, but aside from that, I mean, I think in today's market, loan officers need to differentiate even more. Uh, and so for all you mortgage coach loan officers, and I've told you this before, when you're creating that mortgage experience, make sure that when you create that video for the home buyer, that you started off with how lucky they are to be working with such and such. You know, you're part of the realtor sales process. You know, it's not like two experiences. There's the real estate and there's a loan. It's all one process. The loan is just a means to the home. So I, I, and I think, by the way, kid, if, tell me if you agree, too many loan officers just, okay, I got the loan, now it's my job. And no, you're part of the experience. Make sure you Again, if you're a mortgage coach loan officer, say how great the, the realtor is. Make sure you put a link to the experience for the realtor so the realtor knows exactly what you told the client and they understand the value of your advice. And every time they give you a referral, not only are they going to get rewarded on the back end when you keep your promise and close on time, but they're going to get rewarded on the front end because they're seeing you deliver something amazing. I mean, Ken, uh, do you agree with that philosophy and is that how you would like your mortgage professional to implement and execute. That's so true, Dave, where if you can have, you really are part of the team where the client's thinking, well, 
this, my agent referred me to this excellent lender. So if the, something goes wrong, of course it reflects poorly on the realtor. But if you can do, so performing, that's just a given. But if you can go even further, as you mentioned, and say, well, for Ken's clients, we actually, we have, you know, another processor. We're going we're gonna to expedite the processing of your loan. You know, we, we, we love his clients. You get elevated service. Something like that where they feel special because of this referral, because they're referred by that particular agent, they're getting something like a little more attention, a little extra love, or how lucky they are to be working with that realtor. And between the, that great team of realtor and lender, it's going to be a very seamless transaction. But I have a title officer who's the same way where every time she sees my client, she just kind of blows me up in a positive way. And like, well, I love working with her. She's pretty much it. And then the lenders who like make me look good, it's just how can you not want to work with them again and again? You really, you're trying to kind of establish the clients that they're getting this white glove service throughout and they want to feel pampered. And then if we can, you know, if the lender backs up the agent with that, it's a huge value add for everybody. Yeah, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit a few questions that have come in. And some of them I just think you've answered it. But I, I just want everybody to feel like we're listening to you. Perfect. Um, here's one question we haven't answered is how many people are on your immediate team? If you could answer that real quick. Yeah, definitely. So two years ago, I was much smaller. I had just um, three people, um, a couple admin people, so really quite busy. Um, and I was still cranking out pretty good volume. But now that we're going to the next next level, I'm actually hiring aggressively. I've literally hired seven people in the last two weeks. Um, in our season, kind of fall slows down and winter is pretty dead. But I'm going to come on so strong next year, hitting that 400 plus million, that I'm actually training now. So now I'm actually up to 21 people. Um, and I'll be competing in the Wall Street Journal rankings now on a team category. But it's just, I want to go big. So we're already up to 21 people, and seven of those are brand new. Probably in about two years from now, I'll be over 50. Um, I'm kind of trying to change, you know, improve the model. I want more people with details. But I just, you have to believe in yourself, and you have to invest heavily in yourself, and make it the best client experience. And ironically, I've never really, because I've, you know, come close to death, I'm not really that motivated by money. But people probably know the irony that when you don't care about money, that's when it just comes in because clients can trust you. They know you have their best interests at heart, and then they, they want to work with you. You know, I think sometimes realtors, like, we get in a contract, we start counting the commission. Like, until it closes, it's not yours. So if the client doesn't want it, always back away. But just always put the client first, and then the money will come. But, yeah, the team's 21, but talk to me in a year, it'll probably be 40. We're, I'm going big. This is a go big or go home. Like, this is... <laughs> Well, I would hate I would hate to be competing with you, Ken. I actually feel uh, bad. There's a lot of really nice agents in my marketplace. I feel like yeah. uh, just bad luck to be in the well, most. No, I mean, hey, anybody can can you know if you invest, you got you got to have that strategy that I am going to be bold. I'm going to invest in that relationship, and if you can connect, I mean, not taking you on here, yeah. but I could I, I I'd compete with you. I mean, but it, but it would all be about I have to match you on investment. And then I have to personally connect with that person, and uh, you know, you guys can do it, you know. And and I guess I bring that up because so many people on the call. It's not like they're all these mega producers going to the next level. So many people on the call, they're closing less than five loans. They're they're you were there once upon a time. And hey, my first eight months. I didn't have a, I didn't have a single sale. My first eight months. The next eight months, I had twenty million. But the first eight months, you know, I was just doing things differently. All the old ladies in my my cold banker office are like. Oh, he's out the door. He's never going to make it. I told you so. I told you he's too different. And like it's like you know you had to persevere. So no, for those out there who aren't blowing it up yet, eight months, nothing. Like the whole world's against me. And just I had a vision. Sometimes you're doing things that are out of the box. It's going to take time for them to catch on. And it's just you can't. You know you have to believe in yourself, believe in the model that you really are adding value to the clients. But it will hit. But yeah, don't ever. You know, don't ever lose faith if your things aren't going well right away. It takes time. Yeah, so someone put in here, 30% uh, seems like a ton of money. How is that money spent? So as much as you're willing to share on that and speak to that, I know you kind of hit it 10 ways to Sunday, but I just want to make the point. Because oh, no, clearly. Um, and 30, that, the, the number, my vision is that the number will probably decline a little bit because my price points are really going up, where my average price is a little bit over $2 million, but I'm starting to get, now I'm starting to get a lot of fours and fives. So that number probably will decline, but no matter what, it's going to be. I mean, marketing, my marketing budget is over a million um, this year. My marketing to Chinese buyers alone is over three hundred thousand um, buyers in Silicon Valley of Chinese descent, mainly. Um, but yeah, big numbers. But where am I putting it in? 
I think as a whole, my vision is I want to do things that no one else can do quite as well. Build some competitive advantages that um, even if people match you financially, they couldn't be as good as you are. Some, so in addition to all my marketing, let me just hit some of the highlights I'm doing. So now I'm doing very high-end virtual tours, not the old pan, but I'm spending sometimes on high-end homes, $10,000. And they'll be like, it's like shooting a commercial. Two trucks come in. There's like eight people. I get, you know, get makeup on, camera crew, the jib, like the 20-foot camera. And they're going to do pans of, you know, if it's acreage, they're going to shoot on me and then pull out and show the whole acreage. But the video is so polished. It looks so spectacular. Great lighting, great scripting, you know, full suit, full makeup. <laughs> I mean, what, you got to do what you got to do, right? Um, but the thing is, if anyone ever wanted to spend 10000 in marketing, and they don't, they wouldn't be quite as good um, on film, especially if I'm, you know, can, you know, edit it. I'm good in the highlights. So that's the key. And people, they don't know who to call. They don't want to spend the money. And also, the video tour is increasingly important. We're having a lot of people buy homes now, high end homes, sight unseen sometimes, um, coming from overseas or, you know, moving in from, you know, other tech centers of America. So it's actually very valuable for the client, but also something that no one else can do. Typically, I'll spend about four to five thousand on a video. But a really high end tone where I need like the, the the jib for the high camera shots, and I need you know a teleprompter because we're doing a huge amount of scripts. Um, but that's a big one. I'm also always try to successful marketing. Try to find where is the market trending. And then in our marketplace, a lot of buyers now are coming from overseas, particularly more China, India, and other places. So I'm advertising heavily where all my ads are translated into Mandarin in the Chinese papers. I'm on the Chinese TV, I'm on Chinese radio, um, so I'm doing a lot of stuff there. I'm also doing a lot on social media. Um, Facebook ads are amazingly reasonable, so I'm doing Facebook ads. Um, I also have, a Merced I have a, got some national press, I have a 14, a Mercedes limo bus with 14 seats. Um, so I bought the bus, but I take a lot of Chinese buyers around to my listings um, to look at that. Um, print marketing, I'm still, I'm getting, even though print marketing is less valuable than it used to be, I'm striking such good values with the papers because I'll commit to a lot that I'm doing a lot of um, you know big two-page ads when other people are just doing half-page. Um, so the marketing is big, but I think a video, um, Chinese marketing, and then kind of like the best in the traditional areas would be where I'm putting the funds. Okay. So also so at all my open houses, I'll have I have a barista serving lattes, cappuccinos. I have high-end catered food. I make it more of a party experience, and it's, it's great. People linger longer, but also buyers are much more willing to share information with me. I think you do better. I always try to have the mindset, give first, and then quid pro quo, and then whatever they do. But if you give first, people are much more receptive and open to you know, wanting to work with you. Yeah, well, I, I think hopefully there's been a number of takeaways. With your, if you're a realtor, you got some value and some ideas that we've given and shared part of what makes kids so successful if you're a mortgage professional. I hope you can bring more leadership to realtors around these concepts. Uh, I hope, you know, a huge and massive takeaway is, I love this quote from Seth Gooden's Tribes, whatever status quo is, changing it gives you the opportunity to be remarkable. And so I, I, I urge everybody, think about what you're doing in the sales experience, and is it, how similar is it to other sales experience. If you're a mortgage professional, how different is the conversation with you versus every other loan officer? So I, I remind everybody, everybody on this call, you're a mortgage coach member, this concept of what if I help people pay off their home faster with advice? At Mortgage Coach, we help you do that. So I hope everybody on this call, make sure you downloaded the Mortgage Coach app, make sure that you, you put Savage in to keep the link, or click on this from our Facebook page. I want to remind everybody, I mean, we're here to help you. Every person in our organization has an iPad because I we paid for it for them to have it, and they're mobile experts. And every Tuesday, we're here to deliver a coaching call, just like the one we're, we're doing today. You know, this is a follow-up from a call that we did a few months back, Ken. Uh, I think the week after you were on, I had a Navy SEAL trainer, Phil nice. Black, who was a Navy SEAL for four years, was a trainer for six years. I, I, again, I can't emphasize enough, if you really want to focus on your mindset, your attitude, and, and you see Ken and you see his energy and you just know, how do I get closer to that? 
I mean, that, that whole call with Kim Black was boom. This is the, the formula to being a Navy SEAL at whatever you do. It was really awesome. Uh, I want to remind everybody, every Thursday at 9 o'clock we do a training. So these Tuesday calls are all about ideas, inspiration, you know, big picture stuff. Um, Thursday is all about getting into the details and, and executing this. So if you were at that call this Thursday, it's all going to be about realtor strategies. How can you put open house flyers together, seller buy down strategies that wrap financial strategies around homes. So the concept that in, in many homes, maybe not $4 million homes, but a lot of homes, it's the financing that sells the home. So, so having mortgage strategies that help create urgency and help sell in a lot of marketplaces is really valuable. So this Thursday, we're going we're gonna to walk through all the different ways Mortgage Coach can help you execute and deliver around that. Uh, so if you're on this call, make sure you come to that. So Kim, we have a few more minutes. I want to make sure first, I mean, I thank you for the time to prepare for this call. I thank you for the time to just be so open. I mean, you've shared a lot of really unique things that are valuable to you, and you've done it with a, just a real generous heart. So I hope everybody appreciates that Ken took the time to do this and, and be so open with what makes him successful. I, I recommend we'll put a link to his backstory video on uh, this Facebook post. And, and then, Ken, people also, I had a few questions. People ask you for your, um, your, your property reports, you know, what you mentioned earlier, unique insight. Yeah. Are any of those available online, or is there a way that um, we could provide a link to some of that for people? Yeah, that'd be great, Dave. I could, uh, a couple links that might be valuable to listeners would be, um, one would be I have some neighborhood videos I've shot for buyers, which I talk about the pros and cons of the neighborhood as well as future appreciation potential. And I found for, you know, that's a huge value add. And again, how do I get my buyers to buy so quickly in a low-pressure environment and just give them the knowledge? So I'll definitely send you some samples of my neighborhood videos, particularly great for the realtors on this call. I found that that alone, you're the neighborhood experts, you're providing unbiased, knowledgeable information. They really love it. Um, and even for mortgages, I think if you could, people giving uh, loan officers, like talk about, oh, I've seen my clients in these cities have done amazingly well. If you know the trends, but I'll definitely give those neighborhood guys, and then also share with you some of the videos I'm shooting um, as well, so you can just see some of the higher end videos um, you know, that's going on, what those look like. They definitely impress the clients. And going back to your, um, that, that listener who has a good point, 30% seems like a lot. I remember one time at a Keller Williams event speaking on stage, and I had a friend of mine next to someone, she's like, he spends too much money. And she, he almost, he thought to her, well, there's a reason he's on stage. Um, but it, 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 it intimidates people. But to run the numbers, this year, I'll probably pr come very close to these numbers next year, exceed them. But just on the listing side, say theoretically I bring in $5 million in sales, if I spend $1.5 million to market it, it, it was still a great year, and that's just on the listing side. So like some people focus on, like, that's a lot of money to marketing. Focus on the net revenue to yourself, the dollar per hour, and it's always going to be amazing. And I think that, you know, I spend that 30% on the, on the listings. That helps bring in so many of my buyers. Um, at the open houses, we have prime open houses. We, I'll have open houses with... Um, Saturday and Sunday, sometimes over 500 people. It might be the free lattes, uh, but our market's so strong and I do so much marketing, we might get 500 people through an open house. I pick up so many great buyer leads, so that 1.5 million, you know, that might fuel another 5 million in revenue on the buy side. So I think it's just money out, sometimes people, the benefits aren't immediate, but if you can kind of have a vision for, I'm going to become the top listing agent in my marketplace and that's going to help me, every listing I should get two buyers out of. If you can have that mindset, it's amazing how much that marketing is money well spent. No, I mean, I, a couple, couple thoughts as we wrap this up. So first of all, thank you for sharing those links. I'll make sure either Ken puts them on there or I'll put them on our Facebook page so you can see some of the videos that he's creating. I hope the code word was videos. If you are not using video, uh, whether you're a real estate agent or you're a mortgage professional, you're missing a massive opportunity. And every mortgage professional on this call, you have mortgage coach. And I, I hope a takeaway for you is, uh, you know, there's probably a lot of things that you should do to blow up your sales process, but delivering an edge video to every single home buyer, why not? Uh, I, I really don't believe I don't have time 
is, is in your best interest. If you really want to be memorable, if that's the game you're playing, I want to be memorable with this home buyer and with this realtor, taking two to five minutes to say, you know, in that video, the realtor that sent you is awesome. You've got an amazing realtor. Ten seconds. Ten seconds to say, I listened to you and you told me your goal was X. And, and here are the mortgage strategies that I'm delivering to you. I mean, why wouldn't you blow up every single home buying experience with that opportunity? It takes five minutes. So as a mortgage coach professional, create more edge videos and deliver more value to your realtors and your home buyers. Any parting words, Ken, as we wrap this up? Um, well, I think uh, the Seth Godin quote was great. And I've read actually a lot of his books. He's an expert on marketing. And really what I try to do is how do I distinguish myself from others? So that's helped with some of those mindsets, reading and just looking around. But I think particularly for agents, it's invaluable. But I think even more so for mortgage professionals, just because if you look at it, you don't want people thinking, oh, it's just a rate, it's just a rate. If you can distinguish yourself, I've never gotten that kind of insight. He helped me determine the five-year versus the 30-year. He looked at my whole financial goals. I'm going to make partner in five years. My income is going to double. Why pay that premium if I'm going to get this better rate? If you can really... I think the value of distinguishing yourself is key, um, both in real estate and particularly in the mortgage industry. So I think that quote, Seth as a whole, and just read a lot, think a lot, innovate, take the chances, being, being yourself, it's going to be a better life, but also it's going to be a better profession. And thank you again, Dave, for having me on. You have great people. I've corresponded with a few afterwards, and it's an honor to be on again. Thank you. Now, you're, you're awesome. Please vote, everybody. Let us know what you thought of today's call on a scale of, you know, great to good. To average, let us know what you thought. So as you check out, uh, please do that. Ken, again, I'm grateful. I look forward to having you in our community again. I, I know I don't have to wish you good luck because you've got a great <laughs> formula and you've got tremendous energy and commitment to it. So, nice. You can uh, have me on next year. Check with me on the $400 million. I'll be on track. Don't worry. We'll, we'll, we'll be tapping you to get you back in here. So take care, okay. my friend. Excellent. Thank you, everybody. Bye, everybody. Okay. Cheers. Have a great week. Cheers.